Jenny? No. No back enough. All right, well, let's let them in. No Chris. Chris has been complaining about that, but I think they ought to let them in. Yeah, with that. Let them in. Hey, he comes, brother. Got it. Go ahead. Say hello. Let's let him in. Let him in. Let him in. Let him in. I'm going to smile. Sheriff, you got him, boy. You got him. Governor? Ladies and gentlemen. You know, I think I've said this at every stop we've had thus far in Georgia, but I want to say it again here in deep south Georgia. We've made three stops. This is our fourth stop. And I want to say to the good people of Aldoston, Lowndes County, and this, and this area of Georgia, this is the finest crowd we've seen on this train, and we want to thank you for being out here today. You know, the first, the first lady of our land has had a wonderful experience in our great state. She just can't say enough for the good people of Georgia, and the good people of Georgia, I don't think, can say enough for her. And it's my privilege at this time to read a list of names of your distinguished citizens who are on this train, and I'd like very briefly to read them to you because they've been with us, and they've had a chance to talk with Ms. Johnson and, of course, to get to know her better. We've got Mayor and Ms. Stewart, We've got Mr. C.K. Hollis, Miss C.K. Hollis, hey, Hira. We've got Jesse Parrott, Miss Jesse Parrott, Representative Fred Walker, Ms. Walker, Miss Lila Thomas, Miss Bob Hall, Miss M.E. Thompson, Miss T.R. Nisbet, Miss Walter Shrove, Miss Joe Stevens, Miss Harold Limber, Miss Willis Lang, Dr. Frank Lawrence, Mr. George Combs and Miss Combs, Miss Aubrey Stunt and Ronnie Davis out here at the college, and we're mighty happy to have them with us. You know, another thing that, another thing that I want to say to the people of Georgia, the crowds that we have had, the people that have come out to pay their tribute to the First Lady of our land have been hospitable, they've been gracious, they've been friendly, and they've poured out their hearts. This train started out two days ago in Alexandria, Virginia, and it's been through North Carolina, South Carolina, now in Georgia. Aboard this train, we have a lady, a gracious, a charming, a lovely lady, one who knows the South, one who was born and raised in our part of the country, and one who can say y'all just as good as you and I can when we talk, and that we're proud of her. We've got a lady who's down here because she loves this part of our country. She loves our people. She loves our way of life. And I've got another very fine Georgia lady, a beautiful, distinguished Georgian that I want to present her. At this time, I want to present to you that charming, that lovely, that beautiful Georgia lady, Mrs. Herman Talmadge, the wife of our junior United States senator, who will present the first lady of our land, Betty Talmadge. Governor, it's wonderful to be in Georgia with my people again, and particularly here in Valdosta, Georgia, this afternoon. You know, Herman and I had to stay in Washington a great deal of the time, and uh, the happiest occasions are when we get to come home. But if you can't come home, the next best thing to being at home is to feel at home. And my friend, Mrs. Lyndon Johnson, and her fine husband, have made Herman and I feel at home ever since we've been in Washington since 1957. And it is with great pride, and I'm honored, to join with you here today to uh, welcome Ms. Johnson and to make her feel at home. And ladies and gentlemen, I now present to you the most gracious and capable First Lady this land's ever seen, Mrs. Lyndon Johnson. My friends of Valdosta, we've had a wonderful time on this train. I've been traveling with your 
with your wonderful delegation in Congress, your able, young, vigorous Governor Sanders, who is an example of the new leadership of the South, and his sweet wife, and with Betty Talmadge, she and Herman are two of our closest political and personal friends. In all my husband's years in the Congress, he has been close to and worked with your Do Georgia delegation. And he's learned so much from your Senator Dick Russell. I believe it was Dick Russell more than anybody who was responsible for Lyndon being majority leader of the Senate. And for you, from your Carl Vinson, those two who helped so much the defenses, to strengthen the defenses of this country. Now, now some of y'all might be wondering why I'm making this trip. And so, I want to tell you. This is a part of the country that means a lot to me. I spent every summer from the time I was five until I was 21 in your neighboring state of Alabama. My grand, my husband's gr grandparents and my ancestors came from Georgia. In all the years that I was here, in the summertime, I did what all country children do when they go visiting. Uh, we go on hay rides and swimming in the creek and visiting the uncles and the aunts and cousins and sleeping on pallets when they got too many of us there. And it's a part of my life that I remember with love and longing. But a lot of time has rolled by, and I want to tell you about the man who is coming before you on November the 3rd as your candidate in the Democratic Party for the presidency. He's been for 24 years in your Congress, during which time he's worked on things for the farmers like farm to market roads and REA and farm price supports. And then, from the Congress, he went to the Vice Presidency for three years. All that experience adds up to a lot of strength in your ability to do the job that lies before you. And 10 months ago, on a day that none of us will forget because of the tragedy that shook this country, he became your president. Since that time, his thoughts have been mainly three. One, what is most important to every mother and father in this crowd and to all the young folks, to keep this nation at peace. <laughs> Backed with strength and firmness. He puts it in a nutshell when he says, our guard is up, but our hand is out. And, and his second major objective is to keep this country on the path of stable prosperity. I think most of us know that in these last four years, we've been having more take-home pay and doing better. The income per family has been rising. And I'm happy to remind you that these have been democratic years. And then the third thing that is always on his mind is practical, compassionate planning for those Americans still in need. I'm happy to say that the first major piece of legislation that he passed when he became president was one to help education, and especially vocational education. It's a record I'm proud of. I believe a lot of our friends down here agree with. And now, the thing that's mainly in my heart is to say to you that I think we've got a lot of friends down in this part of the world that I wanted to tell them we appreciate them, we need them, we value them. God bless you.
but before before we roll on down the track on our whistle stop that I'm enjoying so much because it's taking taking me back to the part of the country and the way of life that I know best. I want you all to know our little girl, Lucy Baines. Ever since I came to Georgia, I've been hearing from all the fine Georgia people that have been on the train about what a fine football team Valdosta has. And I just have one hope that I'd like to express now that I hope the kind of enthusiasm that has been put into your love for your team and the kind of spirit that we can transfer this kind of enthusiasm along with the reason that has been given to the young people of Georgia, the respect that has been given to the young people of Georgia to let us vote at such a young age of 18 and couple the reason and the enthusiasm into a fine, vigorous, and hopefully successful this campaign this November because I think that we all realize that whatever happens this November, however our country goes and the kind of leaders that lead us now are going to reflect on the kind of situation that our government is going to be in when we have to take the reins of government into our own hands.